Hey guys, welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be reassembling our ancient Rotax racing engine. This thing's a beast, as you saw in that previous video, if you've checked that out. We had some issues with the engine. Hopefully they're resolved. The crankshaft, as ugly as it is, does run true. So we're gonna slap that back together as a bit of a hit and hope. The cylinder is going to be repaired. I'm gonna show you guys how we do that. And then we'll just put all the parts together and it'll be ready for the dyno. So let's get into the video. First things first, we've gotta get those crankcases cleaned up. And to do that, I like to use a little razor blade and just carefully take off any of this old silicon. What you can do is get a little bit of uh, like scouring pad and some carby cleaner as well, and then just spray that on there. And then just give that a gasket face a bit of a rub. And the carburetor cleaner sort of chews up this gasket sealer pretty good. Rub it on there. And then that should just clean it up, rough it up a little bit to the surface. So the new sealer bites down nice and cleanly on the clean aluminium and gets a good seal. The scourer will fall apart a little bit, so just get yourself a clean rag. Just give it a rub down. Make sure it's all nice and clean. And then we're ready to put some new sealer on it. And then we can put the two halves back together and screw it all off. One final rub down with a clean rag and a bit of carburetor clean on those gasket faces just to make sure that they're perfectly clean or as clean as you can get them anyway. So we're just using some uh, XPS gasket sealer here. This stuff works pretty good. Just a small bead. Then we're gonna smear it in with our finger. Troweling it on as we go. A lot of this will push out when we slam the cases together. You just clean it off before it sets up. It's um, it's pretty user friendly. Make sure you've got your crankshaft around the right way. This side is the ignition. So we're gonna put that out through here. And then this is our intake side. You can see on this one, it's got the intake runner there. I'm just gonna slide that down and on. Root. It's got some dowel pins there for location. So once the two halves have come together, just make sure your crankshaft isn't bound up. Turn it over and then we're gonna put all the screws in here. Now we can just install all our screws first. If you've got a rattle gun here, just put it on a very light setting if you're gonna use it. Just speeds up the process. And then you can come around with your T-bar, just nip them off by hand. Then you can see your torque wrench to 10 newton meters. And you can just go and click all these off. Now with the crankcases squashed together, most of that sealant will come out of the excess and you can just wipe that up with a rag. And uh, I'm choosing the T-bar here. And that will get down in that groove, just wipe it off just so it's a bit cleaner looking. Oh. And next time when you clean it, it'll be a bit easier as well. Because you won't have all that excessive uh, silicon line around. Before we go any further, I remember that this engine stud was a bit loose. So I've got some stud locker here. So a little tip from the interwebs is just to drop the Loctite down in the hole. So then as you're screwing in the stud, it, it keeps the Loctite down in front of the stud and has more chance of retaining your stud in your crankcase once you do it all up. 
If you don't have one of these little stud removing tools, you can um, just use a couple of nuts locked together. It does almost the same job. And then you can just crank, hold the case, crank that up and unlock it. That bad boy is never coming out. So I left my run a little bit late. I needed some new gasket paper to make some new gaskets. And this is all I had, so I whizzed that up earlier today. And then we may have a little bit of excessive squish. That's cool with me, because I'm not really racing this thing. So I ordered our new piston the same size. So hopefully I can just clean this cylinder up and it's got the right amount of clearance using the old piston and just using a portable honing machine just to take some of these marks out of the bore, nice and easy. You guys can do this at home if you need to get a sun and hone. There'll be a link down below, Sun and SNJ-10, and you can do the 50.5, which is these old school cylinders. Rather than buying the fancy honing machine to get the job done super perfect, you just want to do your retro stuff. One of these little guys, whether you pick it up secondhand or brand new, is going to get the job done. The brand new piston is ready to rock and roll. We're going to measure it using the outside micrometer if you've got one. You could buy a cheap one of these online somewhere. It's probably going to do the same job as a fancy one. You just want to measure your piston carefully. Then you can see the bore gauge to the size of the piston. Once you've set the bore gauge for the piston, you can check your clearance. This one's got 14 hundredths of clearance, which is going to be perfect for this old school, school high revving machine. So all we need to do is a little bit of a clean up in this cylinder and we're ready to start assembling the engine again. So grab your honing equipment and it's as simple as using a battery drill to turn the hone. I'm going to use it on speed one and then just control the stroke and the speed just to clean that bore up and then we're good to go. So we're going to take a few light strokes with the hone first, then we can loosen the stones off, pull them out, put this to one side, obviously disconnect it from the, from the drill. Then we can wipe the bore out and have a quick look. We're going to spin the bore around in the vise, just like this, and then do a little honing from the bottom. And each time you turn it, you should keep the bore nice and straight. Now we're not trying to take out bulk material here, but this is just to clean up the bore take out any, any surface irregularities. Do up the stones again, and a few light passes from the bottom. If you've got too much pressure on the stones, just back them off a little bit, and you can tighten them up like this, and then the honing is much easier. Now that we've given a cylinder a light hone from both the top and the bottom, I'm going to check for the clearance and inspect the bore. So after a few passes with the hone already, you can see the bore is pretty cleaned up. Yes, it probably could do with a bit of a bore job, but being such an old engine, I'd like to be a little bit cautious on removing too much metal because you can run out of pistons and these things do blow up pretty regularly. So this one is going to get a wash and then we're ready for assembly. So just one final inspection and we've got 14 and a half hundredths of clearance, nearly 15 down near the exhaust ports there. So there we go. You can see that you don't need to hone out excessive amounts of material to clean up your bore. I'm just gonna go give that a good hot wash and then we're ready to get onto the next part of the build. Now these Vertex piston kits come shipped with a piston ring pin and some circlips, which is very good. And now that we've finished honing our cylinder, we're ready to check our ring end gap. So we're gonna slide that down in the bore and then use the piston upside down. Shoop. Just make sure that those rings are not gonna to butt together and push out and damage our nice, fresh, clean bore. Ring end gap is a little bit large. So if you're ordering your Vertex piston, you might want to order a little bit of an uh, oversized ring as well. Go up a couple of sizes. But this one should do the, do the trick for this new engine to see how she goes. So now that we've checked our piston and bore clearance, set our end gap, got our cylinder all perfect, 
I got myself a brand new KA100 little end bearing, just put a bit of oil on everything. We can put the little end into the conrod, then we can put the piston up onto the onto the rod ready to receive the cylinder. And my homemade gaskets there are all playing up a little bit. You can see there, there's a bit of, um, push the piston pin into the piston. You can see here on the gasket where I've traced around it with the texture, there's all that blue marking. But yeah, it's not a bad job, not a bad job. If you've got one of these piston pin circlip tools, it makes life very easy. You can buy these online, we'll leave a link down in the description for all these little tools. We've got one clip in, now it's the same for the other side. You can use your fingers like this, but oh geez, it's real tough. I've lost a lot of skin over the years. Now I'll just buy the right tool for the job. So we're gonna put some oil in the cylinder before we slide the cylinder over the piston. Just try to keep everything well lubed here. Obviously we've got to put some on the piston too. This is just two stroke oil. Then we've got to compress the ring and then slide them all together. Get the front of the cylinder around the right way. And the jiggle. Then we've got to get the cylinder down inside the Hopefully those gaskets just cruise together. There's dowel pins on the bottom of the cylinder that line the cylinder up with the cases. Obviously there's dowels between the two case halves. So everything should be lined up just perfectly. And we're going to put our little head gasket on. Now we can install our Rotax cylinder head. Just like that. Interesting fact. We're still using these little guys on the Vortex Mini Rock engine. We're very similar part for holding the barrel studs or the spaces for the barrel studs to the nuts. With the head roughly torqued down to 10 newton meters, we're going to turn the torque wrench up to 16 and then finish on 20. The cylinder head is on. So we're going to grab our dial indicator, screw that into the spark plug hole. We can put our rotor back on the end of the crankshaft, remembering it has got a keyway on there. So we can't really get that one wrong. Thanks for the comments, guys. I'm going to stick with the motor plat as recommended from you guys. The RPM is way lower for the first fire. It's about 150 RPMs, I believe, over the current, like the newer versions, which is 450 RPMs, like using a starter motor. And when you're push starting an engine, you need every help you can get. So that lower RPMs is definitely gonna help us get this engine started. So with the little keyway at 12 o'clock here, we're just gonna line that up with our rotor, slide that on, just give it a little jiggle. Got a little retaining washer, put that on. A little drop of uh, Loctite, bit of thread locker. Slap that on there. And then we're gonna put our little little nut on. Grab the 17 mil socket. Nip that guy up. We can grab the stator now, put that in, put the little wire through the recess here on the crankshaft, on the crankcase, sorry. Should self-align because on the back side of this, oh geez, the magnets are strong. It's got a spigot here and that's gonna sit down in, in the cases. So it's a bit of a no-brainer, slide that on. Now we can insert our little retaining screws. There's three of those. I'm only gonna lightly do them up just for some orientation. So now that the state is on, we can turn the crankshaft all the way up until the dial indicator you set at zero. Go backwards one point say 1.7 millimeters, probably heaps for us. Then we just want to line our two black lines up, which is the fire marks on the rotor and the stator, and we can lock it all into position with our trusty four millimeter T-bar. Double check your handiwork, 0, 1.7. Now we can install our little keyway using our Trusty pointy nose pliers, and then 
this little guy should slide on the end of the crankshaft. Now, that's the locator for the spinny disc rotary intake valve. So I need to make sure that that's all right, otherwise we're gonna have a big yard sale inside our engine, which is no good. And you can see when I've popped that on, the little keyway is still there. So all is well. Now we can put our little circlip on. And that'll hold it all into place. We will need to know how where the piston is in relation to this guy because we've got to put our timing disc on. That's about 55 after. This was the original carby that came with the engine and this is the bigger carburetor we're going to be putting on it. And check this out, IAMI reed cage gasket, or the carburetor gasket, goes straight on, whole line straight up, carby, bolts straight in. So big power upgrade coming for us with a Triton Carby. So stay tuned, that's gonna be awesome. Now we can reinstall our retaining screws. Got some nice fresh bolts here. Check them all off by hand, nice and firm. Now before we go any further, we're gonna to have to put our little keyway back in the into the crankshaft now that we've got the cover on. And a little pin punch. And hopefully the keyway just slides straight on. Always use a bit of Loctite on these little screws. Put a washer on the nut and you're good to go. Now we have done a carburetor update. I don't know if you guys remember from the last video. This was the original carby that came with the engine, and this is the bigger carburetor we're gonna be putting on it. Big is always better, right? Now we can install our little carby gasket, our brand new old carby, barrel nuts. We can install our little rubber isolators. I'm gonna put a little spring washer and a nut on there. Slot that bottom one off. Get these little earth strap. Put another little washer and we can nip him off. Now we have to run this little uh, earth strap around to the other side because obviously it's a rubber isolator but the coil's got to be earth to the engine for it to work. Now that we've got our little rubber isolators on, they're earthed here with our little earth strap. Install our little motor plate, a couple of new nylon nuts, just tart her up a bit. Now the two wires only go around one way, big guy goes there, little guy goes here, they're done. So with the Rotax engine fully assembled now, it's ready to go on the dyno for some dyno testing. We are going to have to fit up a new exhaust system. We threw the old one in the bin, it's getting a KA100 exhaust socket. I need to drill and tap the studs into the block to receive that and the exhaust gasket. And then we're gonna cut and shut a 125 IAMI X30 exhaust system so it goes like absolute stink. Well, that's the plan anyway. But we're gonna find out, we're gonna try and test this thing on the dyno, see how much power we can make out of it. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. We really appreciate that little bit extra. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook and go to our amazing website, Power Public. Check out our videos and tutorials on there too. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.